everyone and welcome back to another vlog. It's been so long. I'm so sorry guys, but it's been crazy busy my end. Uh, we had a practice nurse leave, so I've been doing extra shifts at work to cover. I've been doing COVID support. I've been doing my assignment and my competencies from a course. I've been doing oh, GPN, SNN stuff. I've been doing a bit of COVID support, which is now stopped now because things are easing which is good to hear. Oh, I've been doing so much, guys. Honestly, it's been rammed busy and my YouTube just had to take a little break just whilst I do everything because I literally had no time to do any vlogs on my days off. I was working or doing my assignments or my competencies, but the good news is it's slowing down. And not only that, but as you know, I moved house. I'm in my new house. Ta -da! <laughs> I haven't found a place to vlog yet from, so... You're stuck with this image right now. Sorry, guys. You know, it's, it's just, yeah, it is what it is. And not only that, but my hair has faded. Look. Oh, I'm booked in, I think, on the 18th of April or something. So a couple more weeks and then I'll be back and bright. So apart from being crazy busy and needing to sleep more, it's been OK, actually. I've been doing all right. What things have happened? So as you know, moved house um i've passed all of my baby immunizations i think i said that in a previous vlog i've passed my final smear assessment now so i'm competent to do smear tests however something very very frustrating is um because for the smear assessment you have to do a lab visit to the lab and a colposcopy visit so you know what the patient's going to go through and all that jazz which is absolutely fair enough i've done my lab visit but however because of lockdown and covid and everything colposcopy will not accept anyone right now at all like full stop um so they won't actually give me my a certificate <laughs> until i've been to colposcopy which is really frustrating. Um, I email Capacity probably every other month to check and see if I can go. I've asked for a virtual tour. I've asked for everything and they just won't do it. And it, it seems very, very unfair. Yes, I understand the importance of it and it's good for us to know what the patient goes through. Absolutely. But I can't pass fully until I've done this colposcopy visit. I can't do a colposcopy visit because of COVID. Um, and I think it's something that they could just waive because from what I've heard, other cities in the country do not need a colposcopy visit and they just get signed off. So why it's that way down south, I don't know. Yes, that's my little groan for the day. Sorry, guys. Um, anyway, my portfolio is coming along nicely. So as you know, or some of you know, that I'm doing the Foundations of General Practice Nursing. This is a level seven course after your nursing degree. So this isn't, um, there's two different ones. If you've got a nursing diploma, you can top it up to a BSc. Um, with this course or if you've already got your degree you would be this would be classed as an advanced diploma at level seven if that makes sense there's a level seven version and a level six version so whichever one you need is the one you're going to go for but if you've already got the degree it's the level seven advanced diploma so here it is my portfolio i don't have an overhead camera like the fancy people on youtube so i have this and my hand <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is our competency portfolio bit. So this first one here is our sign off sheet. So everything is signed off. And then we have our competency list. So I've highlighted the ones that I've done. So we have to pick 16 competencies, which I've added sexual health, obviously, because it's my fave. Um, so yeah, so that's our competency list. I just need to put evidence in the page number there before I submit or I'll be in trouble. This is my action plan, what I'm going to do and when. And then we get into the competencies. So every single letter here, well, not every letter, but pretty much most of the letters has a competency. Um, so this is my consultation one. And we just had to write an analysis of learning. And then we had to put two pieces of evidence. So for this one, I put a consultation that I did. And then I put some feedback. Um, I got some feedback from the same patient on my consultation. So I did that. And then we have infection control, which was by far my favourite because I had a needle stick injury. I know during the COVID vaccines, I had a needle stick injury. 
Um, and so I wrote about it and I used it as a competency, which was actually amazing for my portfolio. So win-win situation there, really. Um, but luckily it was a, a clean needle, it wasn't a dirty needle or anything like that. I just might have had an extra dose of COVID, but it's fine. But I did analysis of learning and a reflection. I did, this is the way we used to set it up before I got my stick injury. And this is why we got a stick injury, because we were resheafing. A lot of you may have saw this picture on my Instagram, because I did share it everywhere to warn people. This is what happened. The needle went through the lid into my finger. <laughs> I still have no idea how this happened. And then I've put the um, the vaccine preparation administration. This is from the uh, Centre of Disease Control itself. And I've highlighted this bit that says, bring the dose of vaccine from designated preparation area immediate to the patient treatment room for administration. So it's open for interpretation. So this is saying you should prepare it like we were doing before you get into your patient. But now we've changed practice completely and we nix up the vial, but then we take it into the room ready for the patient. And then we draw up when the patient comes in. And that's the way we do it now. So this is just proof that bad things happen and we've changed practice as a result. That is my reflection of it. And I've got safeguarding. So it's cool. Oh, this one was a good one. I haven't, have I printed off? No, I haven't printed off the, comp the analysis of learning. But I had a patient with learning disabilities and they appeared to have self-harmed and I didn't really know how to manage that to be honest um I'd never done that sort of thing so I wrote our surgery at a protocol actually I completely wrote as a protocol so that if it ever happens again for other nurses that we know what to do in that situation so this has got all the nice guidance um and part two of it is specifically for learning disability patients and what to do but it is quite long-winded um but yeah, it, it really needed to be put in there. So I have done that. Health promotion. So this one's a good one. Um, I did analysis of learning and I did a research paper on cancer breast screening, which I've just reminded myself I need to print out because I haven't printed that out yet. And a patient information leaflet. So I put these in place in our... Um, in our surgery because we didn't have anything on checking your breasts and we have to do this at every smear check so this is a really really good one if you're interested it's from copperfield.org they do really good webinars as well on checking your breasts um really really good information for your patients so i put that in place in our surgery a mental health comp comp um, competency um that is an extra bit that needs to go somewhere that's an extra bit that needs to go somewhere um, then I've got my asthma competency, venipuncture competency, ear examination, my cervical screening and what happens, ECG competency, we're getting there guys, wound care competency, sexual health and that is it yeah so if you are looking to be a general practice nurse this is the type of course you can look at going on to you have to secure a job first however before you start the course because obviously you need to do these things in practice and have a mentor and stuff like that so you can't just do this course like willingly after your degree and for just for fun it's a course that you need to be working and the GPs will fund this or your CCG will fund this if you're a new qualified nurse or new to practice so ask them the question However, some practices will not send you on the course. You will go into general practice as a practice nurse and they will train you up on the job. So you'll have separate little courses here and there. You learn and stuff like that and they'll train you up that way rather than go into university and getting an official certificate. It just depends on what your practice does. And this is the frustrating thing about general practice. No practice is the same. My practice, what I do is completely different to every single other practice. And the practice that you might be at will be completely different to every other practice. Like everyone has got their own pot of money, their own funding, their own ways of working, their own terms and conditions, their own contracts. So it's, it's kind of like a, a lucky dip, really, what you get. <laughs> But trust me, guys, we are fighting for some standardisation across the UK on this because it needs to happen 100 percent. Anyway, so some other exciting news I have for you is um, that I oh I don't know whether I should say it because I don't actually know yet. Oh, I'll just say it anyway. So I had an email to my NHS inbox uh, for the role of a super practice assessor position. And this isn't. I'm not leaving general practice, don't worry guys. 
don't worry, I'm still in practice nursing. This is something you do alongside your role. Um, so this role is going to be helping student nurses out in the area. So it's not just in my practice, it's across the board in Portsmouth and Southampton area. So if you are Portsmouth, Southampton based, you might see my face at some point. Yay! Dead excited about it. So I will be begging practices to take students on basically and helping students in general practice and making sure they're okay and supporting them wherever I can basically um, and sorting out timetables and things like that. So that is going to be my job I think. Um, I have applied for it but my manager has to okay it. However it's a win-win situation really because um, I've said I want to do it but I'm going to do it on my day off so I normally have a Thursday off and now that everything's calmed down and my portfolio's done and everything I've got time to do it so I said I'll do it on my day off on a Thursday and then if I've got a half day like I do half day Monday I could probably do half a day as well so I could probably do one and a half days a week doing this um, they get the full funding for me so not only am I doing it in my spare time but they get funding for me to do it and I'll get paid for it so it's it's a win-win like how can my practice say no to that I mean I've thought of every eventuality they can't say no but anyway it's got to go to the partners meeting and the GPs have to decide and the practice manager has to confirm it and so I'm, fingers crossed I should hear back something today from that but I will let you know as I go I may have jinxed myself and I might not get it but we'll see it's in the hands of the gods now so we'll see what happens um, so yeah, so because clearly I'm not busy enough, I want to take on this extra role. Um, because as you all know, or most of you know, I love students and I love giving advice and tips and helping people where I can. It's just what I love doing and it keeps me motivated and it's something that I've been looking out for to do since I became a general practice nurse because it's something I really want to do. So when I saw this post, I was like, oh, I need this job right now, this second, give it to me. Um, and I rang the woman straight away and I said, I can't do this full time, obviously, because I'm a practice nurse, but... I can do like a day and a half a week or something um, and they've actually okayed that. It's just down to my practice. Come on, guys, please give me this. I'll probably regret this in a few months time and I'm pulling my hair out thinking I can't do this. But no, uh, I'm so excited. But yeah, I've missed um, that interaction with students. It's been a long time and it's something that I really, really want to do. It's something I want to do in the future. You know, I want to be a practice nurse, but I also want to do teaching and lecturing and oh, too much things but anyway now that things are calmer my portfolio is pretty much finished I've just got a competency left to do two competencies I think left to finish and then that's done I hand it in next month so I'm gonna have a lot more free time so yeah that's pretty much it um that is my life update it has been non-stop all go and it's been very very busy um but I'm gonna get back to doing some vlogs hopefully and yeah I'll work it out some way or another but um yeah if there's any vlogs that I haven't done yet comment below don't comment things that I don't know about because I can't do it I'm really sorry but if I don't know it I can't do it um but I will obviously try and do things so if there's anything you want me to cover anything you want me to do look back at my videos first and see if I've covered it yet if not put it in the comments and I will try my best and do it but that is it from me. I hope you all have an amazing week and I shall see you next time. Mm -hmm.